whatever he wants to do when he wants to God can do whatever he wants to do
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you from this day forward, life evermore. Amen. And our man. We will open the service for today with the singing of Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. There is an insert in your program. Join with us if you can.
Turn our hearts and our minds to the reading of the call to worship. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. Our souls make their breast in the Lord. 
Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt, let us lift up the name of the Lord together. Let us do this. Let us praise and rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. We will now be blessed with a selection by the pianist, If Heaven Was Not Promised, by Andre Crouch.
If heaven never was promised to us, if there was no golden streets and crystal staircases, angels in the sky, if none of that was real, although it is, if none of that was real, still living a life in Christ is still the best way to live. Amen. We're here today to celebrate two things. We're here to celebrate the life of Margot E. Turner. And we're here to celebrate the presence of Almighty God. Both of those things are happening simultaneously right now, at one time, in one place, here in the midst of us. So we give God the praise and give God the glory and God the honor. And truly, Margot is deserving of all praise and deserving of all honor. And truly, our Lord and our God, our one and only true God is deserving of any praise and rejoicing that we lift up in God's holy presence. For we know at this very moment, our loved one, Margot, is in the midst of our Lord and our God. I would like to take a moment just to present a prayer of comfort. But in the, the style of Margot, our first of all, in comforting is not to comfort us, the family, but first of all is to comfort those of you out there who might be going through something and having brokenness and, and suffering and pain right now occurring in your own lives, in your own family. And Margo would like to us to present a word of a prayer of healing of the goodness of our Lord and our Savior to address and nurture and administer to your presence. We know that we have a family here that's very close to us, and, and their brother right now has gone undergone a, a, a heart a surgery and right now is in intensive care, and we pray for him and that family. That may be those here who have loved ones going through something, cancer or, or COVID or, 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 or some illness, diabetes, whatever it might be, we, we lift you up in prayer at this very moment. And we ask him, Margo, to intercede for you, intercede for me, intercede for us, to give us the strength and the will and the wisdom to do that which is in accordance with the Almighty God. That will bring hope back into our hearts and bring understanding back into our minds and bring peace back into our souls. Oh Lord, our God, we are tempted and tried and often made to wonder why should it be like this? Lord, haste the day when our faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and O oh Lord, shall descend even so. I want you to know, Margot would like you to know, it is well with her soul. We are in pain and we are mourning. I believe the word of God which says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. But we ask right now for you to open your heart to the light, open your heart to the presence of Almighty God, open your heart to the peace of God. And let the grace and the peace of Almighty God that passes all understanding, let it enter into our hearts and our souls and nurture us and give us that which only God can do. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, not, not some temporary peace, not, not some ever now and then peace, but, but the everlasting peace. Told the woman at the well to come and drink from the water that he provides me. For if you drink from this water, you drink from this bubbling stream, you will never thirst again. We're here today to witness and to celebrate the presence of God and the light of Margot Turner. We thank God for her. 
We thank God for her family. We ask Almighty God to strengthen her family, not, not just at this moment. But this moment is, is hard. But the next moment, and the next moment, and the next moment after that is going to be even harder. If all of the calls have stopped being made, and all the cars have stopped coming, and all the things are not happening, and still you have to deal with the, the missing a very wonderful and beautiful and outstanding woman. So we thank God for your presence. We thank God for you coming and joining us. You, you give us strength with your presence. You give us strength by being here today. We lean on you. And we ask that you provide us with a little bit of comfort to help us get through this minute in time, this moment in time, so that we can carry on our lives honoring Margot and all the other and the rest of the days of our lives. Thanks be to God to each and every one of you. Amen. And now we will have the acknowledgments and resolutions read to us by Elder Gail Robinson. Yeah.
Dorothy Price, Elders, Millicent, and Edna McClay. A journey remembered. As some people journey through life, they do footprints wherever they go. Footprints of kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. Even when they are born, you can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind. A trail of righteous hope that invites us to follow. Praying you will be comforted with precious memories and God's presence to share to you in your life. Please accept our sincere and deepest sympathy during your time of loss. It is our hope that your memories will give you and your family comfort and peace. Dr. Lawrence Cephas and Dr. Juanita Thomas. Resolution of Respect in Loving Memory of Dr. Margo Turner. Though the days among us were too brief, and our brief is that as the law is never ending, we draw comfort from the knowledge that you have found safe refuge in the Lord and in our hearts, where no darkness or pain can touch you now. Whereas the death of Dr. Marco Turner does not diminish the profound benediction of a life lived in such godly service. And whereas Dr. Marco Turner was a faithful member of Bethel Presbyterian Church, and she cared for the least among us as if they were the dearest and freely gave of her time and energy as a supporter, volunteer, leader, or whatever the occasion they call her to do. This included her frequent visits to the senior to the meetings of the seniors group, known as the Bethel Holy Club. Her trips made a great impact on the seniors' presence. She would bring them gifts, check their blood pressure, check and answer questions about their health concerns. She brought such smiles and joy to the meeting, they could hardly wait for her next visit. We truly thank God for granting us the opportunity interact and share with her. We were blessed by her presence. Her spirit was so special. On a gloomy day, she made everyone feel good without even taking out a prescription bag. Whereas the family and acquaintances of Dr. Margo Turner are deeply saddened at her departure, as all who are touched by her generous spirit and kindness. And whereas Dr. Marvel Turner's legacy of faith and service will continue to inspire her loved ones and every member of our Bethel Golden Club. Therefore, we eternally resolve that we bow to a greater world in our own and rest in the knowledge that one day we will be united with Dr. Marvel Turner again in joy and in the fullness of God's mercy. Humbly submitted by Deacon Grace Marvel of the Bethel Holy Club, Bethel Presbyterian Church. We, the members of Bethel Presbyterian Church, give honor and praise for the life and service of Dr. Marvel Turner. Whereas Dr. Turner grew up in Bethel and was a member in outstanding service. Whereas Dr. Turner was a compassionate and giving person. Whereas Dr. Turner was an elder and in service and served with grace and love. Whereas Dr. Turner was a member of the Young Women's Service Guild and served with willing heart and always participated in the functions of the year. Whereas Dr. Turner, as a doctor, supported and helped the members of Bethel in times of their medical and health needs. 
And whereas Dr. Perry, seeing the patient that had come into the Dean's Hospital, who was to go on dialysis, encouraged the patient by sharing her journey on dialysis that made it easier for that patient. Whereas Dr. Turner loved and cherished her family, family. and whereas Dr. Turner had a deep and affectionate relationship with her sister, brother-in-law, her brother, her family, and it is attested for her to find her love for them. Whereas the members of Bethel loved and honored Dr. Turner, she will be missed for the gentleness and concern that flowed from her personality. We love her, but God in Christ Jesus loved her best. Whereas the members of Bethel commit this resolution to the family of Dr. Turner, believing and trusting that God sees and knows their sorrow and will again fill their hearts with the memory of her love and love and dedication. Respectfully submitted by Brenda Tucker Boykins, the clerk of session of Bethel Presbyterian. This time the Senate has set aside a few moments for some brief remarks from those who might gather here today who have a reflection of their life in the Marlboro that they would like to share with us. We would appreciate it if the remarks were kept as brief as possible. And not redundant, but something new each time. And a really goddamn version of an event would be greatly appreciated. So at this time, we open up uh, for remarks. Microphone right there. And uh, She was the godmother of my children, Reverend Matthew Brown and Ross Brown. She was my guiding star. We encouraged one another. We pushed one another forward. And 52 years ago when I met her, I was embraced and take, had a new family. Her, Margot's family, the Turner family, what Gloria German Turner did with these three children is remarkable. She guided them through. They had to know and wanted to know the love of God. When Margot would be on call and couldn't get to a church on Sunday, she found a place to worship on Saturday so that she could use God's work. She always worked with God in mind. Look at Gloria's three children, all servants to humanity, all servants of the Lord. Martha, working, loving, pushing us all through. That's my best thing. And I miss her. Get that finger and make that touch of that ear. She 
always talk about needing a doctor, a business, and a business, and she did it. She was very caring, and many times that when I had medical problems, I went to her because I knew I was going to get very good. She's not with us in the physical, but she is with us spiritually. We bless family and know that we had somebody in your life that was very caring. We do give honor to God on this day. We give honor to the minister from the gospel and to all of you today. We celebrate Lord on today because this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in him. We celebrate the day because we can make it all for a night, but joy does come in the morning. We celebrate today because we all grew up on this little block down North Sunday. And in those days, everybody was cousins, aunts, your mom. Anybody could go inside your head if they saw you do something inappropriate. And it was a stigma about North Sunday that the girls were going to all get pregnant and the boys were going to be drugged in. But I have evidence today that in that terror thing and that Tennessee family, they did not happen. And I don't care how much education you get, I'm always carry just a little bit more food in my heart. Sometimes I'm in some meetings down in Citizen, and somebody at the table will say, Well, you know. The ones that are more fully, that's the fall generation. Then my head starts to spread like Star Wars. And I had to turn around and say, who said that? I said, Lord, please keep that more fully down. Because I'm going to say some words and it's not going to say, Father, forgive me. So I just wanted to say to the family, now I'm so proud of you. Parents, the whole block, I'm proud of you coming out professional, and all of us, my sisters, I have three sisters who are all professionals and working in the field, we're assisting those that have been disenfranchised. So even though I had a third day today, I could not let this go by and not say that we celebrate you all the time. And even though I don't have no birth certificates, I am one of the cousins. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Margo's cousin. And Margot's mother is my father's cousin, and Margot's grandmother is my grandmother's sister. So, probably all of my life, I've been affiliated with <coughs> the Turner family. And I just want to say a few brief words that when we grew up, my father and my mother, they believed. In them. And particularly my father, because my father believed in his cousin, which was their mother. He believed in her as an educated person. He believed and supported and endorsed his children as people who were to be successful in life. And he always felt like that whatever they want to do. And he was supporting him 100%. And they were disrespectful. And he always was for the best for me. He would never go to a doctor. And that's why I go to him. That's why I go. If I go to him and say go, he's not going. If I go to him and tell him to do this, he's not 
told him, because he invested in the earth. And when I grew up, I adopted them. I would call her every day. And as she goes in the hospital with COVID, and I called her and she said, no, just do this, do that, do that. And I always respected her. And I always looked up to her. Because she wanted to be. So 
I am is Aunt Margot's favorite grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you something. I want to tell you a little secret. Though Aunt Margot was not related to my brother and I, we both came out of the womb sucking our thumbs and squeezing our grandmother. And if that wasn't good enough, we reached up and squeezed whoever's ear was available at the time. And Aunt Marga was also very connected to my grandfather. And she would, he would just say, you know, it's in the genes. So it's just in the genes that we just our thumbs and rub our hair from our chin. I think the last thing that I want to leave with you is that if any of us in this life, we have the privilege of having a walk with God that is so unique and so intricate. And if we can hold on to that, if each of us is an individual, each of our walks is as unique as our and with that, I want to tell you that Aunt Marco had a constant, open heart. She loved, and a part of her walk with God was a portion of Judaism. Einstein, partner in love, deep love of faith. And I believe that it's and she could see in another that same flame of God. With that, I will say Shabbat and let you know that the Word of God is living and active, both in Hebrew, in Greek, and in any way that you choose to find your good. Be blessed. This time we will have a selection. I I won't complain.
Thank you, and as many of you already know, Margo was not one to complain. She never complained. At this time, uh, we will have the obituary read to us by Elder Ethel Cowley. Margo Eleanor Turner was born on June 21st, 1952, in New London, Connecticut, to the late Bernard O'Neill Turner Sr. and Gloria Jermaine Turner. Her parents, both born in Philadelphia again, returned to Philadelphia before Margo's first birthday. She was the eldest of three children, her sister, Bernadette, and a brother, Bernard Jr. Margo had an enjoyable childhood. She spent the early years of her life on a small street in the Strawberry Mansion section of the city named Colonial Street, where the children and parents were part of her extended family. Margo's early education was at the former William McIntyre Elementary School. It was during her early years of school that she expressed her desire to one day become a doctor. She was not deterred by the fact that in the 1950s, the dream of becoming a doctor for a young black female was not thought by many to be an attainable profession. Margo was a serious student who enjoyed reading, listening to music, and conducting science experiments at home. She accepted nothing less than high grades and was willing to study hard to achieve them. Margo enjoyed summer day camp at the Strawberry Nation Center when she learned to swim, hike in Fairmount Park, and explore the science of the many trees and insects there. It was at the center she learned to play the piano. Her parents not only exposed her to the arts with visits to the many museums in Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Zoo, but also instilled in her the spirit of giving and volunteering. Margo and her sister volunteered with their mother to knock on doors in the community to encourage neighbors to join the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP. She also walked with her mother on a picket line when the city of Philadelphia planned to build a bus station on a site where a new school was needed. The community eventually won, and the elementary and junior high school was built. Margo was born into the Rebel Presbyterian Church where her mother had been a member since the age of 13. She accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and was baptized into the faith at the age of 13 and participated in church and Sunday school activities. She also served as a junior usher. It was around this time that Margo was blessed with what she and her sister always wanted, a brother for Margo. Okay. <laughs> As an adult, Margaret was a dame and installed as an elder in the Presbyterian Church USA, a position that represented the federal congregation in observing and setting policy as well as serving the larger church. Margaret's academic abilities enabled her to attend the Julia Massey and Junior High School for the academic encounter. She was always serious in her studies while at Massey, and her grades reflected it. She demonstrated her growing sense of community service by tutoring young children in the basement of her home. Margo was rarely seen without a book in her hand to either study for a test or to read for pleasure. She also enjoyed writing poetry. During one semester, Margo studied art at the Fletcher Art School in South Philadelphia on Saturdays. 
Margo attended the Philadelphia High School for Girls. Her focus remained on her desire to become a physician. She became a candy striker, a volunteer service oriented group of young women who assisted staff in hospitals. She was assigned to the Albert Einstein Hospital. She was proud to wear her red and white striped uniform. Her determination to become a physician was intensified by her experience as a candy striker. Though dissuaded to continue her pursuit to become a doctor by school counselors, her mother insisted that she not listen to them. Margo attended the Pennsylvania State University, where she obtained a Bachelor's of Arts and Science degree, majoring in science, and was accepted at the Samuel Hahnemann Medical School, where she graduated in 1979 with a Doctor of Medicine degree as an MD. Margo returned to our Einstein Medical Center as a resident in internal medicine. During that time, she became board certified. Soon after this, Margo was able to realize her dream. She opened her own private practice as a physician in internal medicine at Albert Einstein Medical Center. She cared for her patients for more than 20 years. Everything that led her to this place in her life was depicted in what she did as a doctor. She was a dedicated doctor who cared for her patients' medical, social, and economic well-being. Her bedside manner was admired by her co-workers, her patients, and their families. She demonstrated empathy and compassion for her patients and their loved ones. She continued this way of serving her patients throughout her medical career, even as she moved from one hospital position to another. This was demonstrated in her work at Temple, Dean, Abbott Tennant, and Kendrick Hospital in Philadelphia. Her health was not able to deter her from being the kind of doctor she was called to be. Even during her last days, leading up to her transitioning from this life to eternal life, she demonstrated her faithfulness to Daisy Doctor, her love of music, and the strength of her faith. She went to work up until the end. She attended a Jeffrey Osborne concert on the Sunday before her passing. She worked on Monday, and she gave up the spirit early Wednesday while enjoying the sleep. To God be the glory. Margo leaves the morning and cherishes the loving memories of a full and beautiful life. To her sister, Bernadette Turner, Stratton, and Jimmy, one brother, Bernard Mel Turner Jr., one aunt, Mary H. Beeman, two loving and devoted friends, Tina Jones Brown, MD, and Cheryl B., three godchildren, and a multitude of cousins and friends, prayerfully submitted to the family. Old Testament lesson will come from a scripture, Psalm 27, verse 1. And I was told that Margo recited every day. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And the New Testament lesson comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, 
Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. We will sing together hymn that's printed in your insert, Bob and Gideon. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight. This I ask in Jesus' name. 
Amen. To be completely honest with you, I really and truly have very little to add to what has already been given. We had these loving, warm, heart-provoking testimonies of people and their inner reaction in the life of Margot and Margot's inner reaction in their own life. And we got a picture of her uh, through the telling of those words, of growing up, going to med school, being friends all that time, and still friends today and family today. And also we had the obituary that told everything from Margot's birth all the way through. So what is there left for a preacher to say? So I'm going to be brief because it is a warm day. And you have been here for quite a while. So there's no reason to go on and on. But there is a word, a moment, that the Lord has placed in my heart about the Lord's relationship with Martha. So you just need to add that to all that you have heard so far to get a, a, a full scope of who this woman, this wonderful, outrageous woman, Margot Eternal, MD. As we gather here today, we are in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, Allah, Adonai, the one and only true God. Angels at this very moment are descending and ascending. The Spirit of God is moving over us and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, is right here sitting next to us. If we listen closely, we may hear the words, Behold my daughter in whom I am well pleased. O oh Lord my God, I believe, help my unbelief. For those of us who believe, without doubting, let us open our mind, spirit, and heart to the awesome awareness of God's presence. Since God is the God of the living, we're here to celebrate life. Celebrate the life of Margot Turner. Let us feel the presence of God. Let us talk a moment and feel the presence and the spirit of Margot. Let us feel God lifting up our spirit. Taking us in the palm of God's hand and, and, and nurturing to us in the midst of this sanctuary. Where Jesus Christ promises that whenever a two or more gather in my name, there I shall be in the midst of me. That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. In the midst of this praise and this uplifting joy, let us call to mind a moment in time when we ourselves cross the path of Margot Turner, a moment when she interacted with our lives, with an act of kindness, an act of healing, an act of laughter, or an act of compassion that connected your life with her life. When it comes to Margot, I am family. I like so many of you, and so many of the family members that are here, she was a sister to me. She was my doctor, as well as my friend. She was a member of the body of Christ named Bethel Presbyterian Church, to which I was called to serve as their pastor. That doctor-pastor relationship seemed to work out well for both of us. Margo used to give me a little tips about medicine to fit into my sermon. 
Now she gave her little tips about the working of the Lord to fit into her time in the emergency room. I'm here to share a few words in celebration of her life. But for me to talk about Margot, I have to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. When Jesus said that when two or more gather in his name, there he will be in the midst of them, what he was saying that was that when this happened, the odds are that they would be talking about him. This is seen in the Luke 24 passage, when two of Jesus' disciples were taking a walk uh, from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. And while they were talking and discussing what had happened right before the few days of the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and their disciples, while they were discussing, while they were talking together about Jesus, all at once Jesus appeared right there with them. Jesus means for us to know that whenever two or more of us gather, we're going to be talking about Jesus. And when we're talking about Jesus, I tell you, if you talk with an open heart, an open mind, and a faith that's not doubt, he says, I will show up. Jesus and Margo live with intertwined, connected lives. I can't talk about one without talking about the other. You see, I know a time where Margo used to work the, the late shift, the graveyard shift, the, the overnight shift at, at the hospital in the emergency room, and she uh, used to get off at 6 and 7 in the morning. She looked to find a church that was open at 7 in the morning on Sunday so she could stop in and worship on her way home. <clears throat> she didn't say, I, I can't go, I worked all night. She said, I didn't go because my, my service only starts at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. She looked and found the church that opened up at 7 in the morning and stopped in to have a little talk with Jesus on her way home. There was also the other connection in Margot's life. When it comes to celebrating Margot's life, we find ourselves celebrating family, as well as everyone else she loved and who loved her. Margot is one of the most intelligent, ego-free persons that I have ever met. And when I heard that word met, when I said that word met, it reminded me of a license plate that she had one time. She had met on her license plate. Margo E. Turner. M-E-T. So whenever you met Margo, you met all of who Margo was. Her humility and gentle spirit put people at ease and gave them the notion that they knew her better than they actually did. She was so genuine. Then there was her amazing sense of humor that caught you completely off guard, leaving you in stitches, roaring with laughter. You could not believe that that just came out of Margot. And then with this twinkle in her eye, she would lift you up, focus on your ability, focus on your skill, giving you a sense of feeling good about yourself. It suddenly became not about her, but about you. It was told to me that Margot quoted to him the, the song that I told you. The, the song reminds us of the passage in the Gospel of John. And he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. In him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. You've got to get a feel for this light, because this light is what made Margot go. This light is what made Margot connect. This light is what enabled Margot to share herself, and her Lord, and her God, and her skills, and all that she knew one to another. This, this light made her begin to look at other people as more important than herself. This light is what shines on people in the darkness, enabling them to see what they could not see. 
and understand what they could not see. This light was the compassion to share with families that lost a loved one to help them to get through the night. This light, this light. And in him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In his letter to the Romans, Paul wrote, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love God along the same lines of the life of his son. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in Jesus. After God made that decision of what his children should look like, that they should be uh, 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 not images of Christ, but, 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 but identical of Christ, to be a twin of, of, of his son. Uh, 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 and once he, he found that, he, he followed up by, by calling people uh, by name to come to be a part of this glorious wonderment of his son. And then after calling, then he established. And then after uh, establishing, he, he proclaimed that nothing would be able to separate us from the love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, this light, this light that went through the eyes of Margot at a very, very young age, this light it was able to shape her and mold her and reveal who she was and what she was about to become. See, in the early part of her life, Margot stood in the shadow of people like Nikki Giovanni. She stood in the light of Angela Davis. But most of all, she stood in the light of Gloria Turk. And that light, that shadow, opened her up and went through her eyes and did a show of who she was and, and what she was all about, what kind of person she was going to be. That light was the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then the music that she loved. Jeffrey Osborne, that we spoke in, 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 in the uh, 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 obituary, but, but there was no love better than Luther. And, and, and there was no love better than Shakabah. Who, who molded her and shaped her, gave her a beat and a move to go along with, with, with the words that, that God has given her. And so she began to open ourselves up to the light. And by the time, close, later on, when, when the diabetes had began to weaken and deteriorate her eyes, you see, the light was so embedded in her. She had so much of the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in her. It no longer had to go through the door of her eyes. The light inside drew the light from the outside, and the light drew the light like a magic, and the light kept growing and growing till she became more and more the person of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But most of all, I'd like to tell you, my wife told me this. Margot never got too far from growth. You have to think about it. Kelowna Street, North Philly, just a stone's throw from Broad Street. Also, Dudley Street, a stone throw. Eddie Street, where she grew up, a stone throw. Then she went to Girls High, all Broad Street. Then she went to Hot Honeyman, then she went to, she went away. She went to Penn State. Now, that, 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 that's a little, little trip she took. And then she came back to Broad Street at Hahnemann Medical School. And then after Hahnemann Medical School, she went to Einstein. And then after Einstein, she went to Temple Gene. And then she went to Kendrick. She walked the hall of the emergency room. I remember one time she told us that you know, she, 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 she was having a, a, a little trouble walking. She thought it was going to be kind of easy. And then she went to one hospital. I'm not too sure if it was Addison or what. But, 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 but they gave her the, 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 the hallway names like streets. And when Mama heard that some of those things were streets like city blocks, she said, there's no way I'm going to be walking all over that hospital. 
But she walked all over that hospital. Margot loved to be a doctor. Margot was called to be a doctor. And she had this light in her. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has shown that God is going to win. That light is also the light that has drawn each and every one of us here today. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Margot shined her light in a little old church at 19th and York. Showing her light to all the people she met at Iron County in her practice. Those who had money and those who did not have money. Those who had medical problems and those who had psychological problems. Margo was there for them. She talked with them and walked with them and showed them the light. Gave them a sense of hope and well-being and possibility for their life. She never put anybody below her. She never, she had accolades throughout her, her tenure. People celebrated her and gave her hats and awards and parts and community. Margo was bold, just courtesy because she felt that she had to go because someone a nominee or something, but it didn't mean that much to her. It didn't fill her head up when she felt more important than anything else. She got off that day and still went to work. And did what God had called her to do. The Lord was her. And the Lord did her life. It's such a beautiful and intimate part of everything that she is and everything that she was and everything that she will be. So I'm asking you, in the days to come, let your mind every now and then drift towards Martha, the goodness of Martha, the gentleness of Martha, the love of Martha, the kindness of Martha, the respect of Martha. They call those things the fruit of the Spirit. Margot encompasses all of the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says you're not just supposed to do one. You're called by God to do them all. And Jesus left us with one command. To love our neighbor as ourselves. Margot is one who loved her that she was called to serve. We give God the glory. We give God thanks for Margot. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, all the things, oh God, that you enabled Margo to accomplish. But in accomplishing those things, oh God, to keep her steady, to keep her in the faith, to keep her humble, oh God, to keep her full of kindness and goodness and mercy and love and self-respect and, and, and being able to, to, to do watch over those that you were called to love and to care for. We ask for God that you be with us. Help us, O oh God, to continue to do what you called us to do. Help us, O oh God, to keep remembering Margo in all that we do. And help us, O oh God, live a life. Help us, O oh God, to live a life. Live the kind of life. Let, let us open ourselves up, O oh God, to the light. Let us be uh, open enough to let the light come into us. Let us not block the light to come into us so that we can be filled with the light, O oh God, so that we also can be uh, uh, molded into the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in doing that, and being faithful to that, we one day, O oh God, will have the glorious opportunity to meet our Lord and in your holy kingdom, and she will get us and show us around, talk to us, let us be a part of our new life and our new life. Right now, oh Lord, we know that she is with you. I have no doubt about that. Right now, we know that she's with her mother, Lord, and she with Lord that introduced her to my mother, and all those who have gone on before us in your holy kingdom. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all those who took time to come and gather to lift up this wonderful, wonderful servant of yours. She truly, O God, 
was your servant. A witness, O God, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was, and truly is, someone, O God, that only you all will be. We thank you for her. We thank you for blessing our lives with her. We thank you, O God, for being able to have all of our tomorrow touched by the life that you gave us yesterday. We ask this and we pray this. By praying together, O oh God, the prayer that Jesus taught us, when we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us, O oh God, our, our give us our debts that we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. And now we have Jesus is the center of my joy.
is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, not I shall dwell, not I may dwell, but I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, world without end. Amen. And all men. Yeah. 
Hey! <laughs> 